what do you think are some of the biggest, most important misinterpretations of the, of the documents of the Council? Mm -hmm. The first, I think, it's the general perception and understanding of Vatican II in general, because uh, the major interpretation and understanding of the Council itself is an understanding of a rupture. Uh, either the liberal ones, either the, the traditional ones. And so we have to, it is, it is necessary to, to have an official interpretation that states that the Second Vatican Council uh, means not, um, had not the intention, the finality, to make a break with the past. Uh, and when we carefully read the, all the speeches which were given uh, by the Pope uh, John uh, the 23 uh, on the beginning of the Council and then also Pope Paul the VI, uh, we can find that uh, they stressed that the Council had not the intention to pronounce some new doctrines, only to, uh, to explain the, the the rules of the faith deeper, and even to protect the the Catholic truths. This was the, the the words of John twenty three, to protect and to deepen, and uh, not to make new doctrines. Mm -hmm. And this is the key of the interpretation. The words of the magisterium, not uh, uh, the interpretation of the theolo theologians or even not of some bishops, but of the magisterium, of the supreme magisterium. And then we, uh, we know the famous speech of Pope ben Benedict XVI in 2005 uh, to the Ro Roman Curia, where the Pope stated uh, officially that uh, we have to accept and I interpret the Council in the continuity of all the tradition. Um, when I was growing up in the 50s we were taught to never touch the sacred body with our teeth even. It was, you know, you had to try to get it down just with your tongue. Um, I was away from the church for 28 years, but I, when I came back and they were receiving on the hand, at what point did they change to receiving on the hand and why, what was the thought behind doing that? Yes, uh, this issue to, this, to change the traditional manner of reverence and to stand and to receive in hand came from, from the Netherlands in during the Second Vatican Council still, and they introduced this without permission of the Church. The bishops and clerics in Netherlands introduced this new manner illicitly and spreading all over the North Europe countries, uh, Belgium, Germany, France, Austria, it was spreading like a cancer. And then the Pope Paul VI for, had forbidden this in 67. But the bishops of these countries continued to press the Pope and then the Holy Father made a, a um, he asked all the bishops of the world, everyone, his meaning about this new manner of receiving Holy Communion. And the, uh, the qualitative majority of the bishops of all over the world rejected this new manner of receiving in hand because of the danger of loss of fragments, of decreasing of uh, the faith or devotion. And so the qualitative majority of all the bishops of the world, 68, rejected this as dangerous. And even so, one year later, 69, the Pope gave the permission to these bishops even so, the Pope was not so um, uh, content with this. This is a fact you can read. There, there are books published with all the documentations about this. And, 
uh, it is true that even in the times in the first centuries when the people could uh, when the holy sacrament was uh, put on the palm of the hand it was not allowed to touch with the fingers the holy sacrament right. never only the priest had to touch this with the fingers right. it is right to because the priest is in the holy mass acting in the person of christ in persona christi as vatican II says very frequently yes and uh, and so this manner of receiving holy communion in this very mm, minimalistic manner of uh, devotion and and adoration it is not from vatican II. the it's, contrary yes. it was against vatican II. Eminence, again, just so our audience knows, uh, your position as prefect over the sacraments. I mean, all of the uh, the norms and all of this, you speak for the Holy Father on this matter. So, yes. For the whole world. All matters touching the sacred liturgy yes. for the Latin rite. Mm -hmm. The Pope could do all himself, but yes. it would be too much. Right. So he always has a cardinal who is in charge of that, mm -hmm. but in his name. Yes, I think this is important. So what we're going over here... Uh, is, is what the Holy Father wants. So this, this isn't uh, your whim. <laughs> Definitely. So, it's not yeah. my document. Right. It's a document of our congregation and the Congregation for Doctrine of the Faith, which we have submitted to the Holy Father, yes. which he has read, which he has corrected, amended, mm -hmm. and put in all the things he wants, mm -hmm. and then approves. And then approves. So this is very That's important. That's what we have in front of us. So we're talking about this is no small matter. What is Section 8? Then, Paragraph 92 is saying similar thing for receiving on the tongue or receiving in the hand. Yes. And the way to... I, I, I cut it short this way. Holy Communion is received on the tongue. That is the normal the in standard. the Latin rite. Okay. But if in a country the bishops want that it be received in the hand. Mm -hmm. The bishops must discuss it at their plenary meeting and vote by two-thirds majority. Really? Before they, that come they want to you. it. Before they come to you. And then they refer it to our office. Yes. When we ratify it, then it is allowed to receive in the hand mm -hmm. in that country. Mm -hmm. And in the other, they can still receive it on the tongue, though. Always. Mm. See, some people uh, don't know that either. So, uh, Unfortunately, yeah. some people they insist you must receive on the hand. Mm -hmm. No priest has the right to demand that. Mm -hmm. And even no bishop mm -hmm. has the right to demand you must receive on the hand. No, no. The faithful remain free to receive on the tongue or if it is approved in their country, in the hand. This is 
This is wonderful. I mean, uh, to find out what Rome uh, is really saying and what are the rules, regulations. Father is giving a very clear lesson by his own insistence that the faithful receive kneeling and on the tongue. Uh, he's teaching us something. I mean, this is a, a decision which he obviously made with much thought and for good reasons. And so, to me, it uh, is the case for us to uh, teach the faithful once again about the reverence do reverence for receiving Holy Communion and to encourage them to consider uh, a return to that traditional form uh, of communion kneeling and, and receiving uh, Holy Communion on the tongue.
satanic black mass, and it's about to happen at Harvard University. The Archdiocese of Boston is upset about the event. They're hoping Harvard reconsiders. But even though it will be happening, happening on campus, it doesn't appear school administrators will be getting involved. A Harvard University student club is hosting a satanic black mass reenactment to celebrate witchcraft and satanic worship. The ritual is expected to take place at an on-campus bar May 12th, and the Harvard Extension Cultural Studies Club will be hosting. The performance will be conducted by the Satanic Temple, a group known to stir up controversy. The Archdiocese of Boston is firing back with this response. The Catholic community in the Archdiocese of Boston expresses its deep sadness and strong opposition to the plan to stage a black mass on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge. They go on asking believers to pray for those involved in the event and that Harvard disassociates itself from the activity. The reenactment of a satanic mass is scheduled to be held in the basement of this Harvard University building and it has raised the question, is it education or a religious attack? A planned mass has created controversy at Harvard University, not the usual religious mass, but a black mass, and it's attracted the attention of the Catholic Church and students. The Archdiocese of Boston wants the university to put a stop to it. In a statement, the church says in part, this activity separates people from God and the human community. It is contrary to charity and goodness, and it places participants dangerously close to destructive works of evil. Now, in response to the Black Mass, St. Paul's Catholic Church, which is associated with Harvard University, is holding a holy hour at the same time. Reporting live in Cambridge, Katie Brace, WB. Thank mm -hmm. you.